Hello everybody. Now we are now continuing with our lecture series on water and its treatment and uh, we are now dealing with the process of uh, the removal of hardness uh, uh, and in the previous lecture we had we had dealt with the lime soda process and in today's lecture we will be dealing with the zeolite process now the zeolite process uh, like the lime soda process uh, is an external treatment process that is the hard water is treated prior to its entry into the boiler now uh, before I explain to you the underlying principle behind the zeolite treatment process, let me explain to you what are zeolites. Now the zeolites, they are minerals that occur either naturally on the earth's surface or they are uh, synthesized in the laboratory. Now the naturally occurring zeolites, they are not porous, that means they do, do not have the capacity to, re, uh, to remove the hardness of water whereas the uh, synthesized zeolites they exhibit high efficiency of treatment of hard water now as i said the zeolites they are minerals and they contain three principal elements that is the alumina the silica the uh, si uh, uh, plus four uh, cations that means the aluminium uh, al plus three cations the si plus four cations and the oxygen anions now uh, let me explain to you the structure so this is the basically a 2d structure of zeolite and you can see that it is having a cage like structure now uh, uh, if you if you look at this uh, structure you find that the SiO4 is a tetrahedron and it is having a negative minus 4 charge whereas the aluminium is connected to four oxygen atoms to form a tetrahedron and it has got a net minus 5 charge now each SiO4 tetrahedron and uh, AlO4 tetrahedron they are connected to each other by a oxygen atom so that means this is a unit uh, uh, structure of the zeolite and this is the this is the unit building block and this are connected to uh, uh, to many more AlO4 and SiO4 uh, tetrahedrons via a oxygen atom to form a three dimensional uh, network like structure so you can see that this is the uh, actual structure of the zeolite and this is uh, having a three dimensional network or framework like structure now uh, all these tetrahedrons belonging to the SiO4 and AlO4 they are in fact enclosing big cavities uh, between them so these cavities are responsible for giving the porous uh, structure to zeolite so that means the zeolites they have big cavities and they uh, impart a porous uh, structure to zeolite now uh, you can see that uh, the SiO4 and the AlO4 they are having uh, a net negative charge that means a net negative charge is present on an oxygen atom that is connected to the aluminium so uh, you can see that uh, a negative charge is existing on the AlO4 tetrahedron so that means the entire uh, zeolite structure is having a net negative charge now that means this negative charge is balanced by the presence of alkali or alkaline earth metals so that means the uh, uh, al uh, among the alkali or alkaline earth metals we find that thus there, there are sodium ions the potassium ions the lithium ions they are trapped in the uh, um, in the porous network like structure and they are loosely bound by weak electrostatic bonds so that means the uh, the, the sodium form of the zeolite that means the sodium that is trapped within the cavity now that sodium is loosely bound on the surface of the zeolite and that sodium has the capacity to, to be reversibly replace the calcium or magnesium ions or other cations that are present in water so that means it is also known as the, the zeolite process is also known as the cation exchanger now uh, 
uh, when sodium is present in the zeolite, the trade name given to the zeolites is permutite. And the chemical formula of zeolite is represented as Na2O, Al2O3, YSiO2 dot XH2O, where Y represents, it can be any figure from 2 to 10 and X represents any figure from 2 to 6. Now, uh, when Y is replaced by 2, we can write the structure of zeolite as Na2O, Al2, Si2, O8 dot XH2O. So, for simplicity, we can write the zeolites as Na2Z, where Z is O, Al2, Si2, O8 dot XH2O. So, that means what I uh, intend to tell you is that the zeolites, that means this three-dimensional structure of zeolite, that this is the three-dimensional structure of zeolite and it, this three-dimensional structure of zeolite is consisting of innumerable number of SiO4 tetrahedron and AlO4 tetrahedron and these tetrahedrons are connected to each other by an oxygen atom. So that means this three-dimensional structure of zeolite that is having a porous-like structure, now that has uh, uh, that has trapped the sodium ions and these sodium ions that are trapped within this porous structure now they are easily replaced by calcium or magnesium ions or any other cations that are present in hard water so that means if hard water is uh, poured or is made to pass through the zeolite bed then the sodium ions that are loosely bound to the zeolite structure they can easily replace the calcium and magnesium ions that are present in hard water in this way the water that is coming out of a zeolite bed will be free of the calcium and magnesium ions so that means the water that will be we will be getting is in fact soft water so uh, now let us uh, explain the process description. Now in this method, hard water is passed through a bed of permatite or zeolite contained in a cylindrical vessel. So you can see that this is a cylindrical vessel and this, uh, this uh, colored part is the zeolite bed. And you can see that the zeolite bed is having the replaceable sodium ions and they are loosely bound to the zeolite bed. So when raw water that is hard water containing calcium and magnesium ions are poured into the zeolite bed through the cylinder, then you see that the uh, sodium ions they are replacing the calcium and magnesium ions so that means the water that is pass, passing through the zeolite bed is containing the sodium ions and no calcium and magnesium ions are allowed to pass through so that means the water that is coming out of the zeolite bed is free of any calcium and magnesium ions it contains the only sodium uh, cations so that means the water is soft so this is the basic uh, principle or the basic method of, uh, of the zeolite process of the treatment of hard water. So you can see that the loose sodium ions of the zeolite are exchanged for the calcium and magnesium ions of the hard water. Now this is the cage like structure of a zeolite and you can see that the sodium ions are trapped in the porous structure of the zeolite bed. So when hard water is passed through the, this zeolite bed, uh, you find that the sodium ions are replaced by the calcium and the magnesium ions. So that means the water that is passed that is passing through the zeolite bed is containing only sodium cations. So that means all the anions that are present in the hard water they are passing through the zeolite bed and it's only the cations that are trapped inside the zeolite bed. So let us see what are the reactions that are taking place in this treatment process. So the calcium sulfate uh, when it, it, it is passing through the zeolite bed. So this zeolite is represented as Na2Z and the, it is the sodium ions that are replaced uh, uh, and you find that calcium zeolite is the precipitate Then this calcium ions are trapped in the zeolite bed and the water that is passing through the zeolite bed is containing Na2SO4. So you can see that the, uh, the, uh, the anions are allowed to pass through the zeolite bed but whereas the cations are trapped in the zeolite bed and only the sodium ions are allowed to pass through. Similarly, if the hard water is containing magnesium ions, so the magnesium 
sun is trapped in the zeolite bed and the water that is passing through the zeolite bed is containing the sodium ions and the anions that is the sulfate they are allowed to pass through. Same thing happens for the calcium chloride and the magnesium chloride. So you can see that the anions like the sulfate or the chlorides they are uh, uh, they are allowed to pass through. So that means the treated water will contain the anions of the hard water but the cations like the calcium and magnesium they are trapped in the zeolite bed. Now after long use the zeolite bed gets exhausted. Now it can be regenerated by using chemicals such as brine solution. What is brine? It is concentrated sodium chloride or you can use other chemicals like sodium nitrate or sodium sulfate. Now sodium chloride is preferred on account of its cheapness, easy availability and low molecular weight. So the products like calcium chloride and magnesium chloride are highly soluble in water and can easily be washed out. Now let us see this diagram you can see that this is the treatment of hard water by the zeolite process when hard water is passed through the zeolite bed you find that all the anions are passed through uh, the treatment process whereas all the calcium and magnesium ions are trapped in the zeolite bed and only the sodium ions are allowed to pass through. So that means the soft water is containing too much amount of sodium ions. Now let us see what happens in the regeneration process. Now you can see that this zeolite bed is exhausted and it is having no sodium ions but it is having calcium and magnesium ions trapped in the zeolite bed. Now when this zeolite bed or the exhausted zeolite bed is allowed to pass through the, uh, the sodium chloride then we find that the calcium and magnesium ions are replaced by the sodium ions. So that means the zeolite bed is regenerated and we find that the uh, water that is coming out is containing calcium chloride and magnesium chloride and this is how you can regenerate the zeolite bed. Now what are the advantages and disadvantages of the zeolite bed? First advantage is that the zeolite process it helps to remove hardness up to a level of 10 ppm and second point is that it does not produce any hard precipitates or sludge hence it is an environmentally friendly process. Now the equipment that we are using for the zeolite process is compact so that means we are taking less time for the treatment process for the softening process. Then last advantage is that it requires less skill for maintenance. Now let us see what are the disadvantage of the zeolite process as I said while explaining to you the underlining principle is that the treated water contains more amount of sodium ions and the sodium ions are present in the form of sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate. Now we know that these salts are responsible for causing caustic embrittlement when such treated water is allowed to pass through high pressure boilers. So that means these salts will cause caustic embrittlement and what is caustic embrittlement that I have already to told you, explained to you while I was uh, dealing with the topic on boiler problems. Now the second disadvantage is that if the water that is being treated is containing turbidity. So that means what is turbidity? If, it, if, it, if the water is having too much amount of colloids or, or big particles. So that what happens is that such turbid water cannot be made soft by this process because the big colloids they will help to clog or they will lead to clogging of the holes of the zeolite bed. So that means the a turbid water will make the zeolite bed less effective for the treatment process. So this is all about uh, the zeolite process. Hope you have understood this uh, principles and uh, the uh, advantage and disadvantage of this process. So thank you for listening to me.